I'll wait here. nicer than I expected. Darling? You relax. Come on. I, uh, I hope you didn't mind. I mean, not being carried over the threshold. What about this? All the comforts of home. Excuse me, darling. Be back in a minute. George is no good. I just can't. My husband doesn't care about me. He doesn't have time for me anymore. So I, I guess I just got feeling sorry for myself. I thought that anything would be better than being so alone. But I was wrong. I'm sorry, George. George, where's the key? George, please. I want the key. I want to go home. George? George Whitney. 
is in cabin 12 at the Sea Spray Motel. Yes. No, nobody knows about it. He just died. I... Currently a DOA, George Whitney, cabin 12. Mr. and Mrs. Jim White. Mr. George Whitney. So she wasn't his wife. Oh, dear me. I did think they were newlyweds. You see, we cater to honeymoon couples here, and that's what I thought they were. She seems so shy. Senora. Hello, Mama. Has Dr. Cord called? No, but the hospital called. He's sleeping there again tonight. Surgery tomorrow. All right. Al, you pretty sure the cause of death? Heart attack, no question. Look, will you call the coroner for me? We'll see what he has to say about that bruise. Okay. Thanks. Partner, describe the girl again. Well, I told you. Again, Mr. Fargs. Well, she was average size, brownish hair, nicely dressed. I really didn't get a good look at her. Supper. Sorry, the George, the hospital said you wasn't coming home. Well, I got a break. Fix me a little something, will you? Your wife didn't eat yet, neither. David? Hi. What a lovely surprise. No surgery tomorrow? Well, I have a man with peritonitis, but I think I brought that under control with antibiotics. However, oh. Oh, no. Oh, let Norma take it. Norma. Say that we're not here. Say that we went to dinner. Please, darling. I haven't even seen you in three days. What's the matter with you? Dr. Cordrez is in. Matter? Well, your eyes are all bloodshot. Oh, I took a nap. I was sleeping. Dr. Cord, it's for you, Senora Whitney. Uh, uh, would you fix me an omelet, Norma? Hello, Harriet. Yeah. Are, are, are you sober? Oh, no, come on, Harriet. Knock it off. Many a devoted husband comes home late for dinner. Well, then call the police, the Missing Persons Bureau. Harriet. Harriet. Screaming women. David. Why didn't she marry another rich old man? That's a formula that works for Harriet. George hasn't come home yet. That's why she's having a fit. Is she going to call the police? Let the public know that she thinks her matinee idol has feet of clay? No, not Harriet. 
Why don't you get dressed and come with me? What? Norma, forget the omelet. David, do you have to go? Well, she needs a sedative, dear, or a drink. I hate to see her start drinking again. Well, can't you send her over something? Please, stay home. Can't we have one evening together alone? She's a friend, dear. She's a close friend when she was poor. And when she got a couple of million dollars, it didn't spoil it. She's suffering from a jealousy tantrum. I'm afraid she really needs some attention. Come on, you get dressed and hold her hand till George gets back, and then I'll take you out later and buy a hot dog. Hurry up, I'll get the car. Any woman who marries with stars in her eyes a third time around is feeble-minded. Who's got a cigarette? I gave up drinking. I gave up my career. Not a very big career. Some very big drinking, yes. The point is, I was ready to settle down somewhere on Lakeshore Drive and be gauche with this guy. His charm, my money, for better or for worse. Is that something? Well, as of now, his bank account is closed. Why? Because he took his own car out of the garage and went somewhere without asking your permission. And is now three hours and 20 minutes late. Now listen, David. I had lunch with him at the golf club. I saw him leave the clubhouse in a golf cart. They have found that golf cart hidden in the bushes on the 11th fairway. Therefore, he must be with a woman. It isn't his fault. He's an easy mark. I'm not even sore at him. With him, I'm only fed up. But it's the woman I'm sore at, David. As believe me, she'll soon find out. Because she knows exactly what she's doing. To me, not to him. And where is he right now? He's with her. He's with her. And she's cutting my pride in thin slices. And she's loving every minute of it. And I won't have it. Give me the bar. Now, I want you to take these tranquilizers. No! Now, you get out of here. Somebody stay with me, Janet, darling. Janet, you stay with me. David, you get out of my life. Out! Well... Yes? Mrs. Whitney? Yes, what is it? I'm Sergeant Newsom. You mind if I come in for a moment? Come in. David, will you come here for a minute? I'm Dr. Cord. Doctor? Mrs. Whitney, your husband is George Whitney. Permanent home, Chicago? It was. I mean, his was. What's the matter? Where is he? And does your husband drive a convertible with an Illinois registration? Will you stop asking questions? I'm sorry, Mrs. Whitney. This is the kind of a call we hate to make. We had an emergency this afternoon. A man apparently died of a heart attack. We believe he's your husband. All right, take it easy. What? George? No, I don't believe it. Are you sure? Well, there's a slim chance. All his identification, though. Well, then you'll want someone to make a positive identification. Yes. Where is he? I'll go down. No, no, I'll go. Now, Harriet, are you sure? Uh, you no, don't... sure, David. I just... just let me get my coat, will you? Oh, Janet. <laughs> Yes, that's my husband. George Whitney. Sea Spray Motel. Yes, ma'am. Strange. That's one I've never heard of. The best guess we can make is that they weren't there very long before it happened. Evidently, she telephoned from the public booth in front of the place. 
No one saw her leave. And no one knows who she was? No, ma'am. Anything need to be done? Well, yes, there's the matter of the funeral arrangements. Well, I'll, I'll send for the body in the morning. Uh, is that all right? Oh, yes, of course. If there's anything at all I can do... Find that woman. Well, I'm afraid we don't have much reason to want her. I want her. You see, Mrs. Whitney, your husband died of natural causes. He was with her. She's the cause. Morally, if you like, but criminally, no. Oh, I see. So the chances are she's going to get away with it. A little local floozy, a wandering husband, a heart attack. Just ham and eggs in your business. Is that it, Sergeant? Harriet, come on, let's get out of here. Sure, David, sure, we'll go. But I'd like to leave this minion of justice with a parting thought. I want that woman found. And I can afford a very expensive search. Now, you stop me if you've heard this. But you'd better find her before I do. If you want her in one piece. about discretion. That is for fiction. Now, all I said was, find the woman. Now, is that too much for you? I don't know. This isn't one of those deals where you don't want to pay unless I deliver, is it? Oh, really? There's a retainer in this envelope. Not if you want an absolute guarantee. You're asking me to find a dollar bill and a bushel of corn shucks. Uh, Mr. Ellis, suppose I narrow it down for you. George spent a lot of time at the country club. Not a single girl's hangout. There was a dance there the night before last. We attended. And I'll bet so did she. And probably dragged him behind a potted palm and arranged the little rendezvous. Now, everything else I know or can guess is written on a little slip of paper in this envelope with the money. You want it any easier? Fine. Goodbye, Mr. Ellis. Well, good afternoon. Good afternoon. You the manager? Yeah. Welcome to Sea Spray. Save it. I'm not a customer. Private investigator? It's, uh, not that fellow that keeled over yesterday afternoon. Oh, yeah. My, wasn't that a pity? Uh, they were newlyweds, or at least I thought they were. You know, I talked to Sergeant Newsom down at police headquarters. From the description you gave him, I can't get a thing out of the taxi company or the bus company. Now, maybe she didn't take a cab into town, but it's a sense she didn't walk, and if she left his car here... Actually, what I'm trying to do is to get a line on the woman. Oh, she didn't kill him. It was, uh... I know, I know. But I need a better description, Mr. Farris. Well, I've done the best I can. What was she wearing? Well, it was a dress. She seemed to have good taste. I couldn't really describe it. Nice things. What I can't figure out is who'd be looking for her. I mean, who'd hire a private investigator? Well, the facts are that I am hired, and I need your help. Look, there are a lot of places the police can't go, and we can't. There's a lot of things the police don't know officially that we do know. Now, that's the value. And the danger of dealing with someone in my profession. Also, the uh, police can't pay for help. And we sometimes do. No, I think the eyes are definitely wrong. Well, would you say the eyes look more like, uh, like that, Mr. Vargas? No, that's not quite right. Mr. Newsom, does this method really work? Oh, you'd be surprised how well we do. Here, take a look at this, for example. Now, this sketch was made from an eyewitness's description of the man in that photograph. Oh, it's remarkable. Yes, the resemblance isn't always that similar, of course, but you'd be surprised how well we do. 
Now, if you'll just be patient, Mr. Fargus, I'm, uh, I'm sure we can come up with a pretty good likeness of your mysterious lady. truth, Mr. Ellis. I didn't expect it. It just doesn't seem plausible. Uh, you forgive me, but if uh, this woman knew the Whitney's, would she take a chance in coming here? Mrs. Whitney's looking for the one that doesn't show up. Me, I figure if the woman's a friend of the Whitney's, she's covering up. She's got to be here. Well, uh, let's uh, just stroll around, huh? Some of them may have used another door. <laughs> said she'd rather be alone. Well, it's alone with you or alone with the bottle. It's going to come down to that. Well, David, all right if you think it's important. It'd be good for the two of you. I, uh, I think you need some company, too. Do you? afternoon. We might as well take off. Mrs. Cord, what's it like being married to an ambitious man of medicine? Harriet, you're coming with us. That's a diagnosis and a prescription. You got through the funeral fine yesterday. Now, I think that if you get through tonight, you'll probably be all right. David, for crying out loud, what's the matter with you? I'm just having a teeny little one. What is it? I mean, do you get some kind of a Freudian blast out of pasting the alcoholic label on me? I've lost two former husbands. I can handle my grief. Now, you lay off. I'm sober. It's not your grief that impresses me. That notion you have of finding the woman who wronged you, you're on a binge, Harriet. Not alcohol, revenge, but it's still a binge. A big, emotional drunk. You heartless reptile! And one binge leads to another. I'd like to see you get back some of your self-control. Oh, boy, I'm going to tell you something. George wasn't worth a dime. He was weak. He was faithless. But he could make a woman feel... I'm sorry. Oh, there's nothing to be sorry about, dear. Well, I only have an hour for dinner, so why don't we get going? Why don't you get your wrap? <laughs> All right. Come in. Well, come in. Uh, Mrs. Whitney, this is Mr. Fargus. Oh. Hello. How do you do? Uh, this is Mr. Fargus, Mr. Ellis, Dr. Cord, and Mrs. Cord. What do you have? Come on, show me. Mr. Fargus and I have been doing some overtime with the police technicians. Oh. I gave him Mr. Fargus's description of the woman, and from that we came up with a pretty accurate sketch. If you're right and she's someone you know, this should give you a pretty good idea of what she looks like. Those police artists are very good. Janet, come here. Janet, come and look at this. You see, you've got to take into consideration there may be a difference in the hairdo or some 
One little difference in coloration. Well, darling? Do you recognize her? No. Neither do I. I don't know that woman. I don't know her at all. Well, someone will. I'll show it around. Publish it in the local newspaper and offer a reward. Oh, come on now, Harriet. Don't be corny. Oh, good morning, darling. Hello, Harriet. I don't know what you drink for breakfast, but I made you some coffee. Cream? Sugar? The black cream. All right, there we are. Uh, Norma's gone to do the marketing. Oh, what a gem. And your husband left a note in the kitchen saying he's gone to San Diego to what he terms a, a clinic. <laughs> we hope. Now, look, darling. Look what I have. Now, even if nobody turns her in, can you imagine how that little floozy is squirming right now? I'm taking you to lunch. What? To the country club. I know that whole crowd, and I'm still betting that's where they met. And whoever isn't there today may just be buying newspapers, trying to get them all off the stands before her husband sees one. Oh, I can't wait for that lovely human grassroots moment when I meet her face to face. Harriet. Hmm? Has it ever occurred to you, you may be defeating your own purpose? She may feel a lot worse if... I mean, your husband died from a heart attack. If you make a public display of not caring about that, but just hating some mystery woman... Darling, she's no mystery. I can tell you all about her split-level life. Her husband has been neglecting her. So she induces another husband to neglect another wife. Okay. Right husband, wrong wife. Oh, now, come on, darling, let's go. Oh, oh I can't, I really Oh, can't. rubbish. Hello? Yes, it is. What? Yes. No, no. No, please. Yes. All right. Yes, I'll meet you there. Why were you whispering, darling? Oh. I couldn't hear a thing. Oh, yeah. oh, now, come on. Don't tell me you're meeting some man. Oh. It was the dentist, checking on our appointment. Well, if you're going to stand me up for a drill. I I'm sorry, I really must. All right, darling. I'll be leaving. Have you, uh, read the papers, lady? I'm through with mine. What do you want? Two thousand dollars, too much to ask. That's blackmail. Yes. I'm sorry, Mr. Fargus. I don't know much about this sort of thing, but I haven't got two thousand dollars. Oh, sometimes, Mrs. Court, a man runs up a sizable amount of place, well, say, like mine, and if he offers a check in payment, it, 
It comes a good idea for me to see how much he has in his account by asking the bank if his check is good. Did you call our bank? Oh, I just told a little lie there. I didn't uh, give him my right name or anything like that. But I can't take $2,000 out of the bank without my husband knowing. Well, you'll have to explain something sooner or later, won't you? Cabin 12 and Mrs. Whitney or money to your husband. What do you want me to do? Well, the simple thing, it seems to me, would be to give me the $2,000 tonight at 8 o'clock at the uh, Sea Spray Motel. You know where it is? Please. I uh, don't want to seem impatient, Mrs. Cord, but I am a busy man and I have to get back to work now. said you were trying to reach me, so... Uh... Yeah, well, it wasn't necessary to come down here. Well, no trouble. I was in the neighborhood anyway. Look, an interesting thing developed that Whitney case. We, uh, we sent out fingerprints, you know, and, uh... Yeah, here it is. We got this report back from the Federal Bureau. Come in. The door's open. Mrs. Whitney, uh, it's me. Well, do you have some news? Interesting thing turned up. You want to take a ride? Where? Sea Spray Motel. Now, don't be coy. Uh, Homer Fargus, who runs the place, I think maybe he let us down a blind alley. Well, what are you talking about? Well, and I got a hunch he didn't tell us all he knows. Uh, he's wanted back east under various aliases for morals, charges, extortion. Oh. <laughs> Very interesting. I'll get my coat and be right with you. Oh, come in. Please, come in, Mrs. Cord. Oh, dear, I've been quite concerned without even realizing it. You know how it is? You build up an inner tension about a thing, and, and when it turns out right, you're so relieved. But I am glad you decided to come. It's a good decision, you'll see. Uh, actually, all I have to offer you is a little humble privacy. I live very humbly. A few friends, very little appetite. Oh, won't you uh, sit down? No. Oh, oh, I know, you feel kind of awkward, but it's only because it's your first time, dear. I brought your money, $2,000. Oh, with such a kind of quality, a callous quality, that when it's based on the arrangements of just giving and receiving money, isn't there? Isn't that what you tried to tell me in the park? I wasn't trying to tell you anything. I guess I misunderstood then. Well, this should do very nicely. How about the monthly payments? What? Let's see, a hundred or a hundred and fifty? Let's make it a hundred and fifty. A hundred and fifty dollars a month to you? It's reasonable. Mr. Fargus, nothing happened in that room. The man died. Oh, you know what I mean. Nothing happened. Nothing would have happened. I was trying to get out of there. Please, dear. <laughs> I understand, but my only concern is what Mrs. Whitney thinks, or what your husband would think. just how you feel, Mrs. Cord, and I sympathize with you. That's why I've tried to make my demands as reasonable as...
Officer? I guess you know me, and I suppose you know why I'm here. No. Well, the fact is, those fingerprints my men picked up out here the other day were identified as yours. And then it turns out they're not. No, they belong to two other guys. A, uh, Hobart Farnsworth and a Homer Fairweather. Both wanted on federal charges. Now, you can see how confusing that is for us. So if you just come along quietly. Uh, just a minute, Sergeant. I want to talk to you. Not man. now, Mr. It's Whitney. It's very important. I'm, I must. I'm sorry, but we come first. What are you doing? Let me talk, will you please? There isn't any excuse, but... Harriet, I've been lonely for so many years. Well, go on, darling. We didn't go through with it. Nothing happened. Is that all, darling? He was dead. I knew he was dead because I... Since we seem to have the knack of uh, sharing things, let's share this little revelation, shall we? I'll simply find your husband and tell him the woman was you. Then you find him, if you can, and tell him the rest. <laughs> Harriet has told you, nothing happened, and nothing would have, ever. I want you to know that, David. I don't have the courage to say all of this, so I'm writing it. But I will come back to face you, to ask you to please forgive me.
Hi. Where you been? I took a walk. Ah, well, I'm sorry. I'm so doggone late, dear. I got back from San Diego at 10, but there was a message with the answering service from Harriet. Wanted me to drive her to Ventura so she could catch a train to L.A., which we almost missed. Anyway, so, here I am, finally. And I uh, happen to have a very interesting piece of news. Almost, but not quite. Very juicy gossip. Aren't you curious? News? Yes. What? What is it? Harriet found the woman. She told you? <laughs> oh, yeah. Harriet. I'll never figure her out. Pell-mell into things, pell-mell out of things. Impetuous as a two-year-old child. David, what did she say? That's it. She said she found a woman, and then she left. Said she was right all along, that it was an otherwise nice gal married to some overzealous, single-minded type who was more interested in himself and his own activities. You know, thoughtless of her, poor girl. <laughs> Overwhelmingly lonesome. I must admit, I was very surprised at Harriet for not doing something more drastic about it, but apparently she talked to the gal, felt very sorry for her, and then she decided that the town wasn't big enough for the both of them, so uh, she left. She sends all her goodbyes, you know, and all that. Hey! Had a brilliant idea in San Diego. How about, say, three or four days in uh, Mexico? Ensenada. Mexico City, huh? You and me, okay? Here, while you're on your feet. Why don't you fill that up with milk? You can decide about the trip when you come upstairs. All right. Harriet wasn't so kind. She stayed pretty much in character. But I... I also read that note of yours, so... How about my glass of milk? On second thought, forget about the milk. 